I'm Shane Morris for the Colson Center. Our theme for this year's Wilberforce Weekend was, Is Christianity Still Good for the World? Today on the Breakpoint Podcast, we want you to hear from the founder of Generous Giving, Todd Harper, as he answers the question, Are Christians Generous? Now, as you might expect, Harper's answer is yes, but the extent of Christian generosity, historically and statistically, may surprise you. Harper also challenges us to think about Jesus' call to radical generosity. Here's Todd Harper at the 2019 Wilberforce Weekend, as introduced by Warren Cole Smith. Our final speaker this morning uh, is Todd Harper. Christians are among the most generous people on the planet. Uh, Study after study shows that Christians, in fact, are the philanthropic backbone of our country. And interestingly, they don't just give to churches and evangelistic and discipleship ministries. As you heard Jeremiah Johnston say, they help the poor in all kinds of ways. They are the folks that run into the building whenever there's a disaster or towards the plague whenever there's a problem. They help at homeless shelters and food pantries all over this country. But you know, you don't have to take my word for it. You can listen to Todd Harper. His organization, the organization he leads, Generous Giving, has the data and the stories uh, to uh, back up that assertion. And he's helping to ignite a movement of generosity that has already brought a profound difference to many communities all across this country. We think Todd's work is strategic for the kingdom of God and transformative in the lives of the people he touches, and that's why we're delighted to have Todd Harper here at the Wibbleforce Weekend. Please give him a warm welcome. Well, thank you. It is uh, an honor to be here. I want to start by saying that I believe in the five B's of public speaking. I don't know if anybody knows the five B's of public speaking. Be brief, baby, be brief. So that's my goal. Um, uh, I've been asked to answer a pretty simple question. Are Christians generous? And the answer is yes. Thank you. The answer is yes, and it's demonstrably yes. There's no doubt that the generosity of Christians has been and continues to be good for the world. Absolutely. But I would like to pose a little different question for us this morning. And I want to ask it individually and collectively. And the question is this. Does your life inspire a cheerful question mark? In other words, do people wonder what's up when they meet you. It's like, what is different about this person, this couple, this family? And I'd like to ask the same question for us collectively, which is, do we as Christians inspire a cheerful question mark? Do people wonder what is so different about Christians? And I'm wondering if that's even realistic to ask. Is that, a, is that a realistic expectation that people might notice that we're different as Christ followers? Well, allow me to read briefly from the second and fourth chapter of Acts. Several people have mentioned the early church. I just want to read several verses. Chapter 2, verse 44, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Chapter 4, starting in verse 32, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that they had any of their possessions, that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. I love that verb, to share. Maybe we can substitute that, forgive, to share everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. How awesome is that? From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. You see, the generosity, more than anything else, the generosity of the early church ushered in the explosion of the growth of the early church in the first century. And it's our dream that that would be true again in the 21st century, in the wealthiest century in the history of the world, in which Christians have been entrusted with massive amounts of financial resources. What if those were shared like in the early church? Well, Generous Giving was founded in the year 2000 by the McClellan Foundation to stir a spirit-led revival in generosity. We exist to catalyze a movement of Christ followers who give extravagantly of all that they are in response to God's radical grace. I'm standing here in answer to a prayer a written prayer that was written down in 1857. If you do the math, that's 162 years ago. A young man at the age of 20 years old named Thomas McClellan wrote a covenant to the Lord. I'm going to read one sentence from that covenant that he wrote at 20, reaffirmed at 50, and again at 70. He wrote, I consecrate all that I am, And all that I have, the faculties of my mind, the members of my body, my worldly possessions, my time, and my influence over others, all to be used entirely for thy glory and resolutely employed in obedience to thy commands, as long as thou continuest me in life. I don't know about you, but I didn't write anything like that when I was 20. But what an incredible heart intention and prayer. And it was Thomas McClellan who acquired and grew uh, a company that became one of the largest disability companies in the world. 75 years ago, his son put the bulk of that wealth into a foundation that has now given away over a half a billion dollars over the past 75 years to build God's kingdom all around the world. And it was that family that said, we have experienced such blessing in giving generously. What if we could start an organization that had no strings attached? We would cover all the expenses, but we could create places where people could be challenged and invited to give radically for God's glory. And that's what I've been doing for almost 20 years. And it has been an amazing privilege to get to watch the practices of generous Christians. And so from that vantage point where I've been kind of working for the last 20 years, I want to talk about three things briefly. One, I I do want to inform you with some of the data, the compelling data that links the practice of religion and generosity. I want to inspire you with a description of a handful of outrageously generous families and the impact that they're having. And I think only appropriate here at the Colson Center and just the whole theme of what we're doing here, I want to instill a vision for cultural renewal through generosity. So that's my aim. Here's some information. Anytime you start with information, it's good to have a Tim Keller quote. So here goes. He writes, as a whole, secularism is not good for society. Secularism makes people very fragmented. They might talk about community, but they aren't sacrificing their own personal goals for community, as religion requires one to do. In fact, in study after study, religious practice is the behavioral variable with the strongest and most consistent correlation to generosity in all forms. So, for example, here's some stats. 
Americans who attend church weekly and pray daily, in other words, practicing Christians, it's an interesting question to answer the question, are Christians generous? Well, how do you define Christians? So we're going with practicing Christians. 45% of that group volunteered in the last seven days versus 27% for all Americans. Same group, weekly church attendance, daily prayer, 65% gave money, time, or goods to the poor in the last seven days versus 41% for all Americans. Americans who attend religious services two times or more per month gave away $2,935 last year on average versus 704 for those who did not attend religious services. That's more than four times more financial generosity. The rate of adoption for all U.S. households is 2% versus 5% for practicing Christians. Two and a half times more adoptions Rick mentioned this about Africa yesterday, yesterday, last evening, but in the U.S., 20%, one in five hospital beds are run by religiously affiliated hospitals. 58% of the beds in homeless shelters are run by Christian organizations. Local congregations provide 130,000 alcohol recovery programs. They run 120,000 programs for the unemployed and 26,000 programs to help those with HIV AIDS. The bulk of volunteers mentoring prisoners, both while incarcerated and after release, are Christians. Rick mentioned this also last night about the Red Cross, but churches recruit a large portion of the volunteers at organizations like Habitat for Humanity, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Meals on Wheels, and the Red Cross. The church and Christians, I mean, I can't imagine what the world would be like, what our country would be like if there were no Christians. You should write a book. Name it Unimaginable. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shane Morris. I hope you're enjoying Todd Harper's presentation from this year's Wilberforce Weekend. We couldn't keep these podcast episodes coming to you without the generous support of donors like you. If you're a regular donor to the Colson Center, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. If you're not, there's no better time than now as we near the end of our fiscal year on June 30th. To become a financial supporter of the Colson Center, just go to breakpoint.org and hit the Give button at the top of the page. Thanks very much. And now, back to Todd Harper. Pew in their survey, said 7 out of 10 weekly church attenders consider work to help the needy an essential part of their faith. So all these statistics confirm the fact that practicing Christians are demonstrably more generous with time and money and love than the average American. There's no doubt about that. And I affirm that, and I love this country that we live in, and it really is the most generous country on earth. You sense a butt coming? (laughs) Yet, we could be far more generous. And so let me move into a little bit of inspiration, I hope, here. The mission of generous giving is to spread the message of biblical generosity in order to grow generous givers among those entrusted with much. And we do that in all kinds of different experiences where we're creating unique conversations for people to talk about generosity. We believe part of our ministry philosophy and model is that there's a powerful link between our money or our treasure and our heart. Jesus said... In Matthew 6, 19, he said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. He also said a couple verses later in verse 24, he said, you can't serve both God and money. And so at Generous Giving, we often say that it's not about the money, but it is about the money. Because how we handle our money influences our hearts, 
and believe that's why Jesus talked about it so much. He doesn't need our money. He created the world, but he wants our hearts. So because of that orientation, we have some statistics on the community that we're serving and kind of giving patterns of of generous giving participants both before and after their involvement with us. And so one of the unique things about what we're doing at Generous Giving is that we're convening people who are already inclined to be generous, right? I mean, somebody who doesn't give doesn't sign up to come to the Generous Giving conference. (laughs) When we started 20 years ago, we thought, well, we'll just get the wealthiest people we know who aren't generous and we'll just, you know, convince them to be generous, we could never get them in the room. Um, but listen, listen to this. I think this is pretty extraordinary. The average person attending a generous giving experience in 2018, before they came to generous giving, on average, were giving 16.2% of their income away. That's a lot more than average. Okay? 2018 study, Giving USA. The average American gave away 2.1%. That was $410 billion. of gross domestic product or national income. So radically, radically more more generous. The average participant after a generous giving experience was giving away 28.3% of their income. That's more than 13 times the average American. Could you imagine if all the Christians in America started giving that way? You think maybe people would wonder what was up? That might make the news. But I'd like to illustrate those numbers with a few examples of people who live with what we might call a provocative lifestyle distinction. Isn't that kind of a cool thought? Do we make decisions in our lives that provoke people? Like that's different than the prevailing culture. So I think of a portfolio manager and his wife who in his 50s realized that they had overaccumulated. And so they committed to give away 100% of their income going forward to help fulfill the Great Commission. I think of a technologist and his wife who felt called to the inner city. And though they made millions in an IPO early in life, they have lived at the U.S. median income level for the last 15 plus years in order to be able to contextualize and incarnate the gospel in the community in which they lived, and they gave all of the surplus away. I think of a young mother who gave part of her liver to an employee of the company that she and her husband own because of a health crisis. I think of business owners who capped their salaries at at $10,000 per month, which Maybe sounds like a lot until you realize that their business was generating somewhere around $5 million a year in profit. They were giving the rest away to lay up treasures in heaven. I think of a young couple on Wall Street who are living radically below their means in order to give radically. The husband, prior to marriage, this is kind of interesting. This is not normal. He was a Wheaton College grad. Shout out to Wheaton. But he decided that he was going to start his career as he hoped he would end it by giving 90% and living on 10. That's actually what caught his future wife's eye. She was like, well, I've never met anyone like that. Think of a couple who had five children, five biological children, but felt called to adopt and have adopted four special needs kids from China. Lastly, I think of business owners who gave their whole company away. The value of that was north of $100 million at the time of the gift. They continue to operate the business, live on a modest salary, and give multiple millions away each year. So I share these stories to highlight the extraordinary lengths that that Christ followers who have been gripped by God's radical grace, will go to share and give themselves away for the sake of others. So my headline observation in 20 plus years of doing this work, if you don't remember anything else, this is what you need to remember. 
I've never met an unhappy, generous person. Think about that. People who are radically generous are joy-filled. I've also never met a former giver. (laughs) I challenge you to find one. Yeah, I did that. It didn't work for me. (laughs) Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive, and that has been the overwhelming observation of my life in serving and living into this message personally. So just briefly, instill a a vision for cultural renewal. We have a dream at Generous Giving, and I'm going to read our vision to you because I believe you'll resonate with it and potentially want to join a growing movement of compellingly generous Christians who are orienting their lives around giving themselves away for the sake of others in Jesus' name. So here goes. Our vision is to see the generosity of God displayed through the generosity of God's people. We envision a movement of Christians who give extravagantly of all that they are in response to God's radical grace. Our primary motivation is to see people liberated to live and give in God's image in order to see God's kingdom come on earth. This growing movement will create a dramatic shift in culture. Christians, what if this were true? Christians will be known for extravagant generosity rather than consumption or accumulation. Young people will be organizing their lives around giving before they get caught up in the constant pursuit of more. People will be coming to know Jesus because the generosity of Christians is so compelling that they want to know the God who inspires it. In addition to culture being shaped, individuals will be transformed and find greater joy, freedom, and purpose as they trade away saving and consuming on earth for eternal treasure in heaven. As a result, billions of dollars will be released for God's kingdom, sharing the gospel, serving the needy, and healing the world. Amen. I'm going to close with a line from John Lennox because... He's the smartest guy I've ever... I, had, I haven't even met him. I just listened to him. <laughs> but on Thursday night at the Socrates in the City gathering, somebody asked what he would say to Jesus when he sees him. And he was stumped with, you know, not exactly sure what he would say to Jesus. But he said, I can imagine getting to heaven and my thought being... If I'd known it was going to be like this, I might have invested more in it. May we live with a provocative lifestyle distinction that inspires a cheerful question mark amongst those that encounter us. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Breakpoint Podcast. For more on Todd Harper's organization, Generous Giving, go to generousgiving.org. And as I mentioned earlier, June 30th is the end of the Colson Center's fiscal year. If you're enjoying the Breakpoint Podcast, we'd really appreciate you considering making a donation to help us end the year strong. Just come to breakpoint.org and click on Give. Thanks. For the Colson Center, I'm Shane Morris.